My first video was on a Timex Waterberry, and this will be my seventh video where I'm talking about a Timex. And while I think they make great watches, I'm very hesitant to bring them up now because I don't really want it to be the primary focus of the channel. But this is something a little different and in some ways seems like the culmination of a lot of questions and ideas that I had while filming the other Timex videos. Now, when I took a look at the Timex Weekender Chrono, I was asked if I could take a look at a Fairfield Chrono. When I reviewed the Torbolo, a Weekender homage, there was a question on whether Timex could accomplish that same sandwich dial, but with Indiclo. And when I reviewed the Southview multifunction with its beautiful metallic reflective dial, there was a question on whether they could do something similar, but still incorporate Indiglo. Evidently, they were working on it. So without further ado, let's start to take a look at the Timex Fairfield Supernova. Now I believe this case is the same as the regular Fairfield. So let's get the dimensions out of the way. It's 41 millimeters wide without the crown, 43 and a half width. Lug to lug is 47 with a height of 11.5 millimeters. It utilizes 20 millimeter straps and weighs a fairly light 60 grams. Now the case is a very rounded shape that tapers as it goes to the back, sort of like a cross section of a sphere. The case is brass with a chrome-like finish, with the exception of a stainless steel case back, which is slightly disappointing when you consider that the cases of the Waterberries, which aren't much more than this, are made of steel. Although one pleasant surprise is that it has drilled lugs now the crystal is a standard mineral glass, but it's beneath that crystal where things get a little more interesting. Now the Fairfields are known for having a classic minimalist design, something that can easily slip between sport, casual, and look decent while dressed up. And the Supernova is no different, except it goes for more of a modern, minimalistic look. The dial has a sandwich effect, with the lower layer having a dark charcoal gray appearance, and the upper layer being a metallic grid. The grid features cutouts, not just for the subdials, but for the hour indicators and the Timex logo itself. The contrast between the two colors and materials is striking. And if you're looking at the watch at an angle, you can see the reflections of the cutouts inside the case, which give it the appearance of even more depth. I have to say that when I saw the pictures online, I didn't think I would actually like it, but it has grown on me. And I can't think of anything else out there that has a similar look. I think Timex is displaying the watch wrong on their site. They have pictures that are looking directly down on it, which doesn't really make the watch look that interesting. It's much more interesting when you look at it at different angles, where you can see the different textures and the effect of that sandwich dial. Although I can easily see how this more modern look wouldn't appeal to everyone. Now it has the standard subdials for a Timex chronograph, with the dial at the 2 for fractions of a second, the dial at the 10 for time elapsed up to 30 minutes, and a sub-second dial at the 6 o'clock position, which also means the center second hand is for the chrono. The hands are batons in a reflective metal, which look nice, although they do tend to blend into the background of the dial. So, depending on the light, it can be hard to read. A date cutout is at the 4, and it should be pointed out that it is not a quick set date. Rather, the first position of the crown controls the hour hand, and lets you jump hour by hour. 
so you just have to advance that past midnight. It's a little bit of an odd choice for a non-GMT movement, but all Timex chronos have it. Although an added side benefit, if you travel frequently, you can use that to change time zones easier. Now there is no loom anywhere on the dial, but that's a minor thing because who needs loom when you have Indiglo? Now one confusing thing is why you would have a chronograph without any indicators on the subdials. It makes it very hard to read and utilize that chronograph. Except it does have indicators, but only when Indiglo is applied. Now before we go too far, we should talk about why this watch exists the way it does. Although we first need to talk about how Indiglo itself works. So the short version is that just below the dial is an electroluminescent panel. Now inside that panel there are a number of compounds and the one we're interested in is called a phosphor. Now phosphors have the ability to absorb energy. In this case it's when voltage is applied to the panel. Now when they absorb energy it goes into an excited state that lasts nanoseconds before it then releases that energy in the form of a photon or visible light. Now this is a process known as fluorescence. But in order for us to actually see that light, the dial that sits on top must be semi-translucent in order for some of that light to actually pass through. Anyways, so the reason that Timex's Southview didn't have Indiglo was because of its rich, metallic, reflective dial. Keyword being reflective. There would be no way for that light to be able to pass through it. So, how does the supernova get around this? Well, you have the regular translucent dial on the bottom with this metallic layer on top to create that sandwich effect. But in addition to the traditional cutouts of a sandwich dial, the upper layer is then laser perforated to create many, many tiny little holes for that light to escape and pass through. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the Indiglo again. Now, Timex's promotional video is promoting the Indiglo effect as its main selling point for the supernova. Although, I don't really think it's quite that exciting as they make it out to be. But at the right of the watch, you have the standard chrono pushers and the crown. The pushers, they're okay but not much of a tactile response when you use them. And as I said, the case back is stainless and is Timex's standard snap-on case back with the usual markings, including an indicator for 30 meters water resistance. So try not to get it wet. Now the strap is actually a nice surprise. It's a decent brown leather. It maybe a little on the thin side, but it has a nice feel and texture. And there are perforations on the upper edge of each side. So while not a complete rally look, it does give it more of a sporty look. Although a real pleasant surprise is that the straps are quick release. Now the watch wears fairly well on the wrist, and I really like how the lugs come down to a very low point, bringing the watch very close to your wrist. And with a weight of 60 grams, you barely remember it's there. Now the MSRP of the Supernova is $119, $20 more than a regular Fairfield Chrono. And since it's relatively new, it's not widely available. So Timex.com is probably going to be your main source. In the future, that may change. But in terms of value, well, that's a tough one. Now Timexes in general have a lot of value on the lower end of their line. But once you start getting at the $100 range, not quite as much. 
as there is a lot more competition, and good competition at that. Especially if you want a dressier looking watch, or a chrono. But there really isn't anything quite like the Supernova. The closest you can get to it is a regular Fairfield chrono. In which case, you really have to ask, is the Supernova worth 20% more? Especially because it's essentially a normal Fairfield chrono, with just a metal plate slapped on top of it. So while I like the Supernova better than a regular Fairfield, and I personally think the addition of that plate makes it into something new and unique, something that's greater than the sum of its parts, so to speak. So I do think it should have a premium over a regular Fairfield, but I think 20% might be asking too much. I also think that Timex is advertising this wrong. From what I've seen, they're promoting the Indiglo effect more than anything. And to be blunt, that Indiglo isn't really much more interesting than normal. What they should be showing off is that dial in the sun, showing off how the light plays with that reflective metal and the beautiful sandwich cutouts. Because that's what makes this watch unique. And honestly, it's really what you're gonna be seeing 95% of the time you're wearing it anyways. When it's all said and done, I think the Supernova is an interesting experiment. It's a beautiful and unique looking watch. I just don't think it's interesting enough for me. I don't know, perhaps it's just a bit too monochrome. Although, I am excited that they have created this, as it opens up new and creative possibilities for their line going forward. Personally, I would love to see them utilize this technique again, just with a bit more color. Perhaps a diver, but with a brilliant metallic blue or green dial. Now ultimately, it is just a Fairfield with a perforated metal plate over the top of the dial. And whether or not that really means it's greater than the sum of its parts is really up for you to decide. As for myself, sometimes the most elegant solution to a problem is the simplest one. And this is an elegant, creative way to take something existing and make something completely new out of it. Although the biggest takeaway for me is that Timex is willing to take risks. Not only are they willing to let their designers and engineers come up with crazy ideas, they're actually willing to follow through and try them out. Just like they did with the Red Wing Waterbury collaboration, or re-releasing the Marlin Mechanical, and now Fairfield Supernova. Now as usual, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Is it something interesting, or is it just a gimmick? And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.